welcome back to my channel. So after so many requests, I mean, I've been getting requests for how to start your own fashion, beauty, lifestyle, any kind of vlog for such a long time now that I thought it was time to finally sit down and actually do an entire series on it. So if you guys are interested in starting your own fashion or any kind of vlog for that matter, these tips that I have learned through trial and much, much error, they will come in great handiness to you guys because if I had known all of these tips and tricks throughout the past two years of me doing my vlog consistently for the most part um, on a weekly basis, then I would have just been light years ahead of where I am today. So yeah, I wanted to help you guys out there just because this is probably one of my most requested videos. So I wanted to do an entire series on it. And before I start this series, I just kind of want to say that obviously you guys can tell I'm not an expert. Um, so I don't solely do my blog for a living. A lot of people have that misconception. Um, I contract myself out because of my blog through a bunch of different platforms and just different areas of expertise that I've developed in the past two years of running my blog. So I don't solely just make money by writing blog posts every day. And actually a lot of people don't know that bloggers in general, um, they actually don't just do their blog to make money. They do a bunch of different other kinds of stuff. Um, but yeah, we'll get to that kind of later. Um, a few things that I've written down that I wanted to go through um, as far as the videos that I'm going to be making for this series. The first one and that is the one that I'm going to be talking about today is how to get started with it. Where do you even begin? It's so overwhelming looking at all this stuff online um, that I'm going to go over that for you guys. The second video I wanted to make is all the technical stuff. The things that you're really not taught that a lot of people don't know about. So search engine optimization. How do you get your posts ranked on Google to show on the first page of Google? So when people type them in and search, um, your posts will come up first. Um, the second thing is Google Analytics. That kind of goes along with SEO. So analyzing your Google trends and what's popular, what's not popular on your blog, that can really help you determine what kind of content people are liking, what people are disliking, and that can really help you in the long run. A few other technical things are planning your content schedule, how many posts you actually need to post, what should you even write about, and determining who your audience is going to be or who your audience already is. So the third video I wanted to make is all about equipment and editing. And the fourth one, which is my most requested thing in the whole entire world, people ask me this all the time, is how do you make money from blogging? So we'll get to that for sure and I'll go through so many different ways on how to make money through having your own blog and doing other things on the side. And then the fifth thing is how to take good photos and I'll probably do a few more videos but I haven't gotten that far yet. So yeah, if you want to see more of these videos, please click subscribe and yeah, let's go ahead and get into the video. So throughout the past hour, I literally just brainstormed all of the things I wish I knew before I started my blog and when I had the idea of it. I swear you guys, these tips are gold to me. If I had just known these, oh, things would have been so different. I would have been more successful, but that's the point. It's learning. It's more fun than it is stressful sometimes, um, but we'll get to that later. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about is what your blog is obviously going to be on. So my blog is dailydoseofdarling.com. I will link it in the down bar for you guys, but basically I mean, you can't really tell from the title, which um, is kind of annoying sometimes, but um, it's obviously, if you guys have seen it, it's a fashion, beauty, home decor kind of lifestyle blog, but it's really mainly fashion and beauty. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is what your guys' blog is going to be on. I get this question all the time. I mean, even in my past few jobs that I've had throughout college when I was blogging, I would have bosses come up to me, people like my coworkers, sorority sisters, friends, random people on the internet, they would ask me, I really want to start a blog. I really want to make a lot of money. And that's the first thing I get. And I just get so annoyed when I hear that because first off, if you're not passionate about like what you're talking about, like the content you're creating, if you're not motivated to create that content and make it really, really good. Um, and honestly, you have to be borderline obsessed for you to make any amount of money from your blog or else it's not going to be successful. People will tell that you're not into it and they'll just click away. There's so many things that go into blogging, but the first thing you really want to narrow down is what you are good at and what you're passionate about. So like for me, I don't really focus on makeup tutorials all the time just because I'm not a makeup artist. I'm not like an expert. I kind of just, you know, do things for the average girl, some more affordable drugstore product things. I'm not going to pretend to be this magical makeup artist when that's not really something I'm good at. So just because you may be obsessed with something doesn't mean you're ne you necessarily have the skill to do it. 
Um, that's kind of why I gravitated towards fashion because growing up in Los Angeles and California, we have access to things and just we're more knowledgeable about fashion trends. They come and they go. We see them on an everyday basis. So I felt like I had something to contribute to the fashion community. And that's something that I feel I'm good at. I've been asked, you know, what I'm wearing for years and years and like where I buy my clothes and all that. So that's why I kind of gravitated towards fashion. Now your niche might be, um, you might be an animal lover and you want to create a blog all about dogs, dog breeds, cats, that may sound like the weirdest concept ever, but more often than not, there are more people out there than you think that like your passion. So your passion could be anything from nail polish, home decorating, um, flipping houses. There's always room for you on the internet. People think, oh, it's saturated. Oh, you can't make any money blogging. Well, in my experience, that is not true. More and more people are obviously using the internet every day. I mean, hardly any people read books anymore. So the more people that are using the internet and that are looking at blogs, um, the more people are going to find your stuff. So yes, there's a place for you. Don't be discouraged that someone's better, someone's bigger than you. Just do it and do it with all of your might. You have to be motivated. So yeah, I just wanna throw that out there. If you're doing it for money, you will not succeed because people can tell you won't put in as much effort as a person who absolutely loves what they're writing about. So yeah, finding what you love and what you're obsessed with at first is probably the number one step that I would say to a successful blogger. The second thing that I want you guys to kind of think about when you're, you know, pondering what you want your blog to be about, what you want your blog's name to be about, what you want to portray, is how can you be different? How can you add something to the already standing community of bloggers? Well, this is something that I am still learning today. Um, it is so hard to differentiate yourself, especially in the fashion and beauty blogger world, just because everyone's kind of doing the same stuff. And that's why, honestly, I started a YouTube channel and that has just, I mean, that has taught me so much in the past few months of me starting my channel, but yeah, basically you wanna try and add something to the space that's not already there. And you might be discouraged thinking, well, I have nothing to add, everything has been done. Well, the one thing you can add is your unique personality. The good thing about blogging in general and you know being a YouTuber, even though this is primarily, actually this is all about being a blogger, um, is that you guys are unique. You all have your own different personalities. You have something to add to the space because you guys are all gonna give your own personal spin or tell your own story. And, and whatever you talk about, even if it's makeup that's overdone, that people think, um, clothes, fashion, what food, whatever, you guys are all different people. So the way that you approach something is gonna be completely different than the way someone else is approaching something. So as long as you're not copying someone and you're trying to be your own unique person, people will really recognize that and they will appreciate you for your personality along with the content that you're delivering so for the first I think year of my blog I was all over the place I thought I wanted to do food I posted food and I realized that I suck and I do not care about food that was such a fail I talked about my lifestyle on my blog which I realized was not as popular because people really it's hard to get to know someone through a personalized blog and especially if you're trying to show off clothes that's why I started a YouTube channel to be more personable um, and because because talking about my personal life on my blog was not successful in the uh, rankings. Um, then I started to, you know, go into beauty and fashion. I realized that people were actually interested in that. So it's really just finding what you are actually passionate about and doing that first and foremost, even if you think the market is saturated. So after you've kind of come up with your passion and what you want to blog about, then it's time to start coming up with a name. So I think a lot of people, at least a lot of people I've talked to throughout the years, they're like, Haley, what should my name be? And I'm like, well, what's your blog about? Um, and your name is everything and it's nothing at the same time. So when I was thinking of a name, I wanted to try and I was like mainly just going for fashion in the beginning and then I just kind of like developed into this whole thing, lifestyle and everything. But in the beginning, I was going all wrong about my name. And honestly, if I could change my blog's name today, I would. It doesn't really combine all of the interests that I have and it is really hard to think of something that represents you as a whole. Um, Daily Dose of Darling I liked at the time and I still do like it just because I feel like I do have that darling aesthetic. I know that sounds kind of like I don't know what that sounds like to some people, but I get a lot of mixed um, opinions about the name. But basically, I thought of it because I wanted my blog to just look very feminine. I wanted my clothes to be more sophisticated and less urban, so more of a darling aesthetic, and I wanted everything to portray that. So I am happy with that choice just because I still am that person. Um, but it is really important to note 
that who you might be when you're creating your blog is not going to be the same person if you still have your blog going for the next 10 years. You really want to shy away from changing domain names so it's like Daily Dose of Darling would be the domain name. Um, you want to you know, avoid that at all costs because starting over on a blog is so bad um, for Google unless you absolutely have to and you think it's the right strategy move. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of stuck with my name for now because I built up so much authority on Google that, that I don't want to start from scratch and be at the bottom of the search results. I know it's kind of technical, but um, yeah. So avoiding changing your name is really important and trying to pick a name that you think that will carry along with who you are for the next decade plus because you never know where blogging is going to go. You never know where your blog is going to go. So make sure you pick a name that kind of envelops everything that you want to portray, um, even if it is as simple as your first and last names. Once you have a list of your ideas, then I would go to either godaddy.com or I will go ahead and link all the resources below for you guys. There's a bunch of different domain checker uh, websites out there that you can see if the name is taken, how much you have to pay for it, because yes, you do have to pay for your domain name. Uh, I think mine was like $5. A lot of people also ask me how I got my domain name in general. So dailydosedarling.com at the end of it. And when you see a website that is uh, like, well, Google's a bad example, but Nordstrom.com, I think it's shop.nordstrom.com. They have the just.com because they host their own website or you have it hosted through a server. Um, so a lot of people actually start off with, let's say, janedoe.wordpress.com. You can get it free that way if you don't want to spend a lot of money and you, you, know, you just want to get it free. But in my opinion, I would highly recommend avoiding um, you know, having the haleypage.wordpress.com at the end of it because first off, you don't really own your own website. If something shuts down or something goes wrong, you really aren't in charge of it since it's hosted um, through WordPress. So what I would recommend is actually paying for your domain name and having it hosted through another site. Um, and I will leave links to what I'm kind of talking about below. I host my WordPress site through HostGator.com and basically I pay like a yearly fee. I think it's um, $100 or $200 for both mine and Doug's blogs and they host it for me. Um, if there's any, any technical issues, I call them. If my site's shutting down, if it's getting too much traffic, they will let me know, I will call them. So things like that. And it's really important because nobody ever searches, you know, dailydosedarling.wordpress.com. That's just not a good search term. So buying your thing right off the bat, especially if you really know that's the name you want and you're not going to change it, is really important just for the longevity of your brand. So once you've purchased your name and gotten a, you know, gotten your website hosted, the very most important thing that I could tell anybody is get your social media platforms all the same name. Now, I obviously don't have that Twitter, Instagram, not Facebook, but things like that. They're all the same, but my YouTube channel is different and my blog is different. It would be amazing if you guys out there who are starting a blog, every single thing, every platform, your blog, they were all the same name. So if it's Jane Doe, that's your Twitter name, that's your Facebook name, that's your Tumblr name, everything you can think of. Even if you're like, oh, I'm not going to use that platform. Like, I don't really like Facebook. I don't really like YouTube. I'm not going to be a YouTuber. It doesn't matter. You should just uh, sign up through your email. It's super easy. It's free and get your name because like I said, you never know what you're going to want to do in the future and just making everything cohesive and easily searchable is really important. So after you've got your domain name and all your social media handles figured out and all the same or as much as the same because I know some of them are going to be taken. So as cohesive as you possibly can, um, then it's time to develop your site. So there are a lot of free WordPress themes. And I say WordPress, I kind of didn't mention this, but it's really between Blogger and WordPress. And hands down, WordPress wins by you know a million times over. Not really going to go into why. You guys can look it up and find out why everybody wants WordPress over Blogger. Because you just have more freedom. You have the ability to really customize your site down to the color of of, you know whatever you want down to the code you can have someone go in if you want to in the years to come and code your site and make it all the way you want it to look um, so yeah just do WordPress don't even think about doing anything else so so basically the next thing is appearance so with WordPress since I hope you guys would go with WordPress there are a lot of different free themes out there that, that you can just upload onto your site I wouldn't recommend paying a graphic designer to customize your site and the look of it right away just because it's gonna be fruitless you're not making any money off of it. 
Um, it's not an investment that's necessary just because there are so many really good looking free themes out there or even themes that are you know $25 to $50 that you just pay one time for and implement on your site. It's really easy. WordPress is a learning curve. Trust me, Doug and I had to learn it for like the past two years. We're still learning it because there's updates and stuff, but it's really easy. You can just Google how to do things or YouTube even how to do things and it will teach you everything you need to know. So yeah, putting a theme in there, a free theme preferably in the beginning would be your best bet. The next thing I wanted to mention about your theme is really make sure it is clean and easy to navigate. Um, in the beginning of my blog, I had like pink scallops like all around the edges and it just wasn't modern looking. It wasn't updated. It didn't look like a resource like somewhere where you would go to learn about things. It just looked like some girl's uh, like diary or something like her home written diary. So make sure that it is going to appeal to all different ages, all different audiences and something that's really streamlined and yeah, easy to navigate is the biggest thing. If you can't find out where social handles are, if you have to like search to find it, or if you can't find out where the home page is, the about page, um, then that is a problem. I would also recommend once you've developed your site and gotten your free theme or whatever you want to do for your site, um, put it in front of your best friend, your family member, your boyfriend, husband, um, people you may not be that familiar with because your friends and family might be a little bit biased. Put them in front of a computer and have them navigate um, like your site and then have them write down all the things they think that they didn't like and all the things they liked. It's going to be brutal, but it's really important to know what other people think because your idea of what might look good may be completely different to what other people like. So it's important to get other people's opinions in the beginning. So the next tip that I would have given myself if I had just known back in the day is basically do not focus on how pretty or how uh, like just good your site design looks in the beginning. Just slap it together and start writing content because everybody knows, um, especially if you're looking up, you'll see kind of the same phrase repeated over and over, that content is king on your blog. If you don't have good content but a pretty design, no one's gonna find your blog first off. And let me tell you, it is hard for people to search your blog. Just because you think you have a really great blog, um, and I could have told myself I did not know this information back in the day, I thought, oh, I have a really good blog. People are people from random places like the Netherlands and New Zealand, they're gonna find my tiny little uh, fashion blog just by searching. It truly is tough to get your page ranked on the first page of Google, um, just because if you don't follow the certain steps to SEO, which we'll get into in another video, then no one's really gonna find you. You're gonna have like five page views a day if you're lucky and that's probably gonna be from you. So yeah, don't focus on the site design. Really just start to focus on your content because that's gonna rank on Google. That's what's gonna help build longevity and site authority to your website. So another thing I wanted to mention in this video is basically you really, like I said in the beginning, is you have to be passionate about the content you're writing. People are so smart nowadays and I thought people were dumb, like honestly, back in the day. That sounds super harsh, but I thought two years ago, oh, people are gonna wanna read about you know what I think about this lipstick that is not on the market and basically is something that I've had for five years I would write about the randomest stuff I started to write about my lifestyle I started to write about my you know in the beginning basically my boyfriend at the time my living where I live and no one really cares about that because they don't know you but number one, before the fact that they don't know you, they really don't know how to find you. So in the beginning, you have to be writing about things that are searchable, um, and we'll get into how to figure that out later. But you really have to grab people's attention first and have them come to your site before you start introducing your personality, or else no one's gonna find you because it's your personality and your, the stuff about your cats and your dog. And it's not gonna be searchable on Google, so starting with things that are actually searched, so maybe the latest fashion trends, beauty trends, things like that, that's really what's gonna help Help you in the beginning. So another thing that I wish I had told myself in the beginning is that you really do not want to hide your blog from your family, your friends, your boss, your boyfriend. If you want to be a successful blogger, you have to become a successful blogger. And I did not know this at first. I had a blog for a few months, like six months before I told anybody besides Doug. Um, just because I was ashamed of it in the beginning because it didn't look that good. I didn't really know what I was doing, um, but that's okay. Like people know you're human. People know that it's a learning process. And the fact that you're putting yourself out there and trying to be creative other than, you know, work or school, it says something about who you are and 
you shouldn't be ashamed of what you're doing on the internet. I know that sounds kind of strange to some people, but I meet a lot of people that say, I have a blog, but like no one knows. And I'm just like, what's the point? If you wanted to write, go write in a diary or a journal. You obviously have a blog and you host it on a site for a reason. So put it out there. Start to, honestly, I hate to say it, but start to push your content out to your friends and family because those are the people that are gonna care first. So once they start to care, then other people will kind of join in, their friends of friends, and their friends of friends, and then after a while, after probably about a year, more people around the country and around the world are gonna start looking at your blog just because a few initial people started to look at it in the beginning. So if you're not comfortable sharing your blog to your boss, which I never wanted to show my bosses like at work what I was doing on the internet. Um, if you're not comfortable showing it to your parents, your professor, then you're really doing something wrong. Write about something that you're proud of, have good grammar skills, which I did not in the beginning, um, have really beautiful imagery, which we'll get to in another video, but don't skimp on the pictures because nowadays everything is visual. That's why I have obviously on YouTube because people like watching videos, people like looking at pictures. So don't just write a huge blog post with no images. No one's gonna wanna look at it because nothing draws your eyes to a big paragraph of words. Um, make sure you do focus and dabble with the imagery in the beginning, even if it's just like one picture. So that's pretty much it for this video. I know I rambled a lot, but it was just kind of like an intro to the series. The next video is going to be about like the technical stuff. So if you guys are interested in this kind of stuff, please let me know in the comments. I know a few of you guys were interested. Um, and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And if you have a long list of questions, email me. My email is below and I will get back to you guys. So yeah, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye guys. And I was like, I should just try gluten-free pasta. I heard it's gross, but I wanted to try it anyways. This is the Trader Joe's organic brown rice and quinoa fusilli pasta. So it's like the swirly 